What is up, everybody? Welcome in to an all-new episode of the Pack-A-Day Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You, of course, can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Pack-A-Day Podcast. We have two brand new confirmed interview candidates for the Packers defensive coordinator position, Zachary Orr, Denard Wilson. I can't wait to break down both of them for you. But before we get there, just a couple news and notes items that I wanted to go over first. First of all, Kenny Clark. Kenny freaking Clark officially added to the Pro Bowl. I don't even know what that means anymore. I don't care about, I haven't cared about the Pro Bowl in forever, but I will say this. Kenny Clark deserving of a Pro Bowl honor. He had a great season. So great to see him get the nod. Don't care if it's an alternate to a game that's not even played anymore. It doesn't matter. It's mostly for recognition. And if we're talking about recognition, Kenny Clark more than deserving of that. So super excited for him. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Two new quarterbacks were named to the NFC side of things, Baker Mayfield and Geno Smith. Last I checked, neither of those names are Jordan Love. And we sort of knew this already. We knew who the alternates were at quarterback and Jordan was not one of them. So this shouldn't come as a surprise, but it still felt jarring when you heard that Baker Mayfield and Geno Smith were named to the Pro Bowl and Jordan Love was not. That is just, again, now, Again, we knew it already, but what I will say is that's great, you know, off-season bulletin board material for Jordan Love. A little extra motivation as he sees all these NFC quarterbacks go to the Pro Bowl and none of them named Jordan Love. I think he'll get a little bit motivated. I don't think he has quite the like Aaron Rodgers-esque chip on his shoulder, but I have a feeling that that will motivate him going into next season. So while he should have been given the nod, I don't necessarily mind it all that much. Uh, you know, his contract was not, I don't think, actually his, I don't know, his contract might have had Pro Bowl language. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, uh, he's going to see his fair share of Pro Bowls moving forward. Not super concerned about it. He's about to get paid a bajillion dollars. So I don't think it's going to affect anything too much. But like I said, I think maybe that motivates him a little bit more going into next year. Meanwhile, this next one should come as a surprise to nobody. Aaron Jones was announced as a finalist for the 13th annual Salute to Service Award, along with George Kittle and Joe Cardona. Jones, of course, is a huge member of like all these community initiatives and is a consummate professional locker room guy, one of the best dudes in the world. So this should not come as a surprise to anyone, but he is officially one of the three finalists for the 13th annual Salute to Service Award. All right, one other uh, news regarding the Packers. Per Arjan Menin, I think I'm pronouncing that right, probably not, who knows, he's an analytics guy, and he ran the numbers for all wide receivers and how they got open versus single man coverage in 2023. There were 118 eligible wide receivers this past year for his, uh, you know, running this analysis. And the number one wide receiver at separating and getting open against single man-to-man coverage in the entire NFL, 118 eligible, number one on the list was Dontavian Wicks. Not a super huge sample size, but wasn't small enough either to disqualify him. And he was number one on the list by a decent margin. I am not surprised in the slightest. For you guys that don't know, Dontavian Wicks was my second highest graded Packer on the team this season. That's not by mistake. His ability to separate, even when the ball's not thrown his way. Because you might look at his numbers and be like, man, I don't know that his numbers are like still all that great to be maybe the second highest graded player on the team. Remember, when I'm grading these players, it's not just, it's not just the plays that they make. It's all the plays that go into, you know, and that's why we do it, right? You guys can all see when he catches a ball down the field. But what I like to do, especially when watching the L22, is watch all the other plays. How is he blocking on the outside? He's arguably the best on the team. He's a fantastic blocker and is always giving effort. How is he separating on routes where he's not even targeted? Because you might see the ball go over here on the game copy to Christian Watson or Romeo Dobbs or you know Jaden Reed, Aaron Jones, whomever. But Dontavian Wicks, meanwhile, is separating with ease on the other side. He was phenomenal. He's only going to get better. And like I said, was not surprised at all. Number one versus single man coverage in getting open. He is a separation sensation. Devontavian Wicks, if you want to call him, whatever you want to call him, he's amazing. And I'm so glad he is a Green Bay Packer. A couple other pieces of news really quick. Ben Johnson, offensive coordinator for the Lions, is surprisingly staying as offensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions. This is the second consecutive season where he's had, seemingly had opportunities to become a NFL head coach and has instead decided to stay as offensive coordinator 
surprising a little bit. I would have expected him wholeheartedly. I would have expected him to be pretty much uh, a top one or two guy on a lot of people's lists. And instead he's not. That could open up a scenario, interestingly enough, where if the Bears don't do well this year, maybe could he end up in the division as the Bears head coach next year? Uh, we'll see. That's a ways away. But clearly, I think it would have been beneficial for the Packers in the NFC North if he, I don't know, ended up with the Commanders or some, just even an AFC team would have been really nice. But instead, he stays as offensive coordinator and they will try to run it back in Detroit next year. Bobby Babich. Packers defensive coordinator candidate, a candidate that they interviewed for the position. If you remember a couple days ago, when I went through the, the four candidates that we knew were interviewed at the time, one of the things that I mentioned was with uh, the Bears hiring the defensive assistant away from the Bills, Eric Washington, who was sort of the pseudo defensive coordinator, it opened up a legitimate opportunity for defensive coordinator for the Bills. And it seemed like Babbage was the clear and obvious choice. I did mention that Babbage would have been better going to somewhere like Green Bay where he could call the plays as well. Whereas in Buffalo, Sean McDermott is likely going to do that. But the, you know, the promotion seemed clear and obvious to happen if he didn't get a better opportunity somewhere else. We'll never know if he was going to get an opportunity in Green Bay. At least I don't think so. But he does end up now as the defensive coordinator in Buffalo. He is officially off the list and off the market and will not be the Packers defensive coordinator. So if you had Bobby Babich number one on your list, I am sorry. He is the Buffalo Bills defensive coordinator now. Meanwhile, our main topic for today and the other thing that I mentioned at the end of that episode, for those of you who stuck around to the end of that one, as I said, because we did it Monday right after the, the conference championship games, I said, we went through all four in great detail, but I said, with the Ravens losing, there are four additional new candidates that open up that are now able to be interviewed in person and you can bring in right away. I mentioned Chris Hewitt and Anthony Weaver Jr., who as of this recording of this, we have not heard if they've received a interview request from Green Bay as of yet. But the two other names, Denard Wilson and Zachary Orr, both officially interviewing in Green Bay per multiple reports. So today's main topic is going through and doing uh, you know, a, a closer look at both of these defensive coordinator candidates. And I want to start with Denard Wilson, 41 years old, started as a pro scout for the Bears, became a defensive quality control coach for the Rams, and then DB's coach for the Rams, then went to become the DB's coach of the Jets, DB's coach and passing game coordinator for the Jets, defensive backs coach for the Eagles, defensive backs coach and passing game coordinator for the Eagles, and then finally, the defensive backs coach for the Baltimore Ravens just this past year. The interesting piece here is his time ending with the Eagles. When uh, you know when they lost uh, Gannon as defensive coordinator uh, and he became the head coach of the Cardinals, it was thought by many that Denard Wilson would become the defensive coordinator in Philly. Instead, they went with Sean Desai, and that has since gone horribly and Many people have noted that this was a huge mistake that they did not go with Denard uh, Wilson. And to the point where even some of the players have spoken about that, more on that in just a moment. But it was reported at the time that when they brought in Desai to, to take over the defensive uh, coordinator duties in Philly, that Wilson and the Eagles had just mutually parted ways at that point. However, it was later reported by Marcus Hayes that it was actually a firing of Denard Wilson based on the fact that they didn't think that Denard Wilson would get along well with the new regime. Like it wouldn't work well. I shouldn't say get along well. It wouldn't work well with the new regime. And so they had him go somewhere. They basically let him go. They fired him. So there's differing reports there, whether it was a, again, a firing or a mutual parting of ways. He did not get that defensive coordinator job. It looks terrible in hindsight because the Eagles defense completely underachieved this past year. And now obviously have a new defensive coordinator in Vic Fangio and that went to crap. Meanwhile, you know, Wilson had a phenomenal year as defensive backs coach in Baltimore. So I think the Eagles probably have more egg on their face for that, but it was just an interesting situation nonetheless, where looked like he was probably going to get the defensive coordinator job, didn't, and ended up fired. It was just a really weird situation and scenario. But for me personally, I put that more on Philly than I put that anything on Denard Wilson at this point. One of the great things about Wilson, he's worked under Steve Spagnolo. Greg Williams, Todd Bowles, Jonathan Gannon, and Mike McDonald. Those are some freaking names. Spagnolo 
Bowles and McDonald are three of the best defensive coordinators and minds in all of football. Greg Williams, obviously in his prime, was a great defensive coordinator. And Jonathan Gannon was so good at defensive coordinator that he got promoted to head coach in Arizona. Those are phenomenal minds to work under and allow, you know, and basically get tutored by and molded by. I mean, just doesn't get much better than that list of coaches to learn from. It's likely that he would probably keep a 3-4 defense in Green Bay. That's what they ran in Baltimore. However, he has run 4-3 defenses. 3-4 defenses are at least been part of defenses that have run both. This past year, the Ravens ran nickel 75% of the time. And one of the things that this Ravens defense was known for, and Denard Wilson gets a ton of credit for, is the match zone coverage on the back end. All the communication, knowing exactly where to be, the attention to detail. Oh, I don't know, some of the things that the Packers have struggled with forever. Those are things on the defensive backside that Wilson is great at teaching, extremely well-versed in, and would clearly bring a new level of attitude, intensity, focus, and attention to detail on that secondary side for all of those zone match coverages and just hopefully far fewer blown coverages and explosive plays given up because players just aren't on the same page. The great thing here for Wilson He's coming from the number one ranked defense in the NFL, the Baltimore Ravens. They were number one in points allowed. They were number one in sacks, number one in turnovers, number one in opponent passer rating. They were the 12th best defense in DVOA of all time. Not 12th best last year, 12th best defense ever in DVOA. The Ravens defense held the Lions offense and Ben Johnson to six points last year. They picked off Brock Purdy four times in a game. C.J. Stroud didn't have a touchdown pass against them in two games that he played against the Ravens, and the Ravens allowed a 74.9 passer rating last year to teams with winning records. So the best of the best teams that they played, they shut down those quarterbacks. Also, you might say, well, yeah, that's partially just the Ravens and their defense. How do we know that that is anything to do with Denard Wilson? Well, funny you ask. Denard Wilson had the number one secondary for two different teams in the past two seasons. The Eagles were the number one ranked secondary two years ago. The Ravens were the number one ranked secondary this past year. That tells me that that had a decent amount to do with Denard Wilson, if nothing else. So the biggest thing for Wilson, and this was his specific quote. So this is Denard Wilson, quote, the biggest thing is attacking the ball with violence. How great is that to hear, by the way? And that was the opening, th- the opening line of this quote. The biggest thing is attacking the ball with with violence. Like if he doesn't just shoot up your defensive coordinator ratings just by the fact that he's talking about playing violent defense, I don't know what else to tell you. But so this quote, the biggest thing is attacking the ball with violence. We've got to create way more turnovers. The two big winning factors in football are explosive plays and takeaways. In a different quote, he said, quote, I try to be the best teacher that I can be whenever I'm out there. I go out there and teach them and try to motivate them and push them to be the best players they can be. It's business it's professionalism, but they understand you care. Those are great quotes by Denard Wilson. Darius Slay said, this was on Twitter. I think this was last year actually, but this is Darius Slay on Twitter. I know my guy Denard Wilson should be a defensive coordinator in the NFL, to which Chauncey Gardner-Johnson quote tweeted and said, no cap, D. Will damn sure deserves it. He helped me elevate my game most definitely. That's Chauncey Gardner-Johnson and Darius Slay. This is more from Darius Slay on Denard Wilson. He ain't never steered me wrong, not once yet. Like I said, I'm just surprised he's been in the game 15 years and not had a defensive coordinator job because he's a smart dude. I think he would have made a lot of difference. This is if he would have stayed in Philadelphia. Quote, I think he would have made a lot of difference. He was loved by us. I thought for sure he should have stayed. He wasn't a guy who just came in the room and said, this is what we do, done. He put some life aspects to it and he was an honest dude. Defense is a mentality. Again, going back to violence, defense is a mentality. He was the right mentality to lead people. He has the right mentality to lead people in the right direction. When he speaks it, you can understand and like feel what he's speaking on. Always rooting for Denard. Hope he gets a defensive coordinator job this year. This is from friend of the program, Ben Fennell, who will be on later this week. Spoiler alert. Quote, I hope somebody hires Ravens defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald, and then they promote DB coach Denard Wilson to defensive coordinator. Wilson, 41 years old, will be a head coach eventually. Lots of D'Amico Ryans type qualities. 
And Ben has connections with the Eagles. He's worked for the Eagles. I'm sure he has worked with Denard Wilson in the in the past. So this isn't just him, you know, spitballing stuff. This is probably from him getting to to know Wilson a little bit, or at least you know, hearing through people of how fantastic Wilson is. This is from Daniel Popper from the New York Daily News. Quote. He swears like a sailor and demands perfection. What a great combination. He swears like a sailor and demands perfection. His players describe him as feisty, very aggressive, different, and a character. Todd Bowles says he's the sole reason for the impressive play of Jets rookie safeties Marcus May and Jamal Adams this year. This was back when he was with the Jets, of course. Wilson's role in getting the best out of his players cannot be overlooked. Wilson will focus on a specific play or scheme from that week's opponent, something he picked up on while watching film, and come game day, the offense will run exactly what Wilson was preaching in practice. He is affecting Jets defensive backs of all ages this season. Players believe it's Wilson's intense demeanor that helps make him such a successful coach and communicator. I mean, guys, this is incredible stuff that other people are saying about Wilson. It is glowing examples of how he affects the game on a week-to-week basis. Also, I've seen on numerous uh, different places where he is a tape junkie and goes well into the weeds. And it's a great quote there uh, to just show how that affects games on Sundays or Mondays, Thursdays, etc. He does have interviews set up with the Titans, the Giants, and the Rams, and the Giants have already done a second interview with him, and he is the only candidate that the Giants have interviewed twice. He seems to be the leader in the clubhouse in New York, so if they want him, they might need to move fast. Excuse me. He's also had great success coaching players like Kyle Hamilton, Jamal Adams, Darius Slay, James Bradbury. Geno Stone had the best year of his career by far this past year playing under Denard Wilson. So he's had great player development. There is a lot to like about Wilson. The pros, in my opinion, versatility in schemes that he has coached. He has been under a ton of great coaches that have all different philosophies, and he's going to be able to pick and choose all the great things that he's learned from all of them and utilize them as he puts a playbook and scheme and, you know, just an overall, you know, image of, of, of what he wants this defense to be in a mentality, etc. His zone match coverage had impressive secondaries and impressive results. He's coming from the best defense in football. Players and coaches rave about him. He probably should have been a defensive coordinator already. He's going to be a defensive coordinator eventually. The player development that he has shown has been super impressive, and he's been successful in multiple places. And the reason I bring that up is this isn't just, oh, we want a guy from the defense that did well last year, where sometimes you take a guy who was on a good defensive staff and you just say, yeah, let's bring him in. Joe Barry is a similar situation, right? But Joe Barry did not have previous success with other coaches, specifically when he was a defensive coordinator, but that wasn't always the case. Denard Wilson put together and helped you know, grow the best secondary in Philly, and then he did it again in Baltimore. So it's multiple spots under multiple coaches where he's had success, not just one spot with the flavor of the week defense. He's got all of it, and he's done it in numerous places. The downsides... Never been a defensive coordinator, which doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, put him in a bad spot since Brandon Staley is the only one that they've interviewed that has. Uh, he put together, or he's never put to, put together a playbook, or he's never called plays. Again, same thing. Never been a defensive coordinator. Never been a passing game. Uh, sorry, he has been a passing game coordinator. I was thinking of Zach Ward. My apologies. Uh, but the, the other thing really is that uh, the Packers might need to move fast to get him if they want to, you know, let this process play out for a little longer and interview more people over the course of the next week and a half, Wilson might be gone by that time. I think that might be one of the only other downsides here, but clearly a phenomenal candidate with a ton of things to like. And you would have to think that these are things that he's going to be able to bring up in an interview and demonstrate and show. And you would think that Matt LaFleur is probably thinking that he's got a lot of the the traits that he's looking for in his next defensive coordinator candidate. So that is Denard Wilson. Zach Orr, I'm going to be up front with you guys before I go through this. There's just a lot less information and known stuff about Zach Orr at this point. And the reason is because he's 31 years old and he's still relatively raw and inexperienced as a coach in general, not just as a potential defensive coordinator. 31 years old. For those of you who are Badger fans, his brother Chris Orr did play for the Badgers, if you remember him. He started as a defensive analyst for the Ravens, then was an outside linebackers coach for Jacksonville, and then became the inside linebackers coach for the Ravens. That's it. That's the resume. 
31 years old, defensive analyst Ravens, outside linebackers coach for Jacksonville, inside linebackers coach Ravens. No passing game coordinator, no defensive coordinator, just nothing else. That's it. It was a player and then went on to those three things that I just mentioned. He has worked under Wink Martindale, Mike Caldwell, and Mike McDonald. Now, to be fair, Wink Martindale and Mike Caldwell are both defensive coordinators that are out there. So if the if the benefit is that he worked with Wink Martindale and Mike Caldwell, you could just call up Wink Martindale and Mike Caldwell and like, you know, get it right from the horse's mouth. Now, obviously he worked with Mike McDonald, which is definitely the coach that everyone's trying to copy right now. So, um, you know, Martindale and Caldwell don't necessarily have that, but you, you kind of get my point there. He has had mostly three, four influences, and I would expect to, you know, have him run a very similar defense in Green Bay. Obviously, all the amazing stats that I talked to you about with Denard Wilson for what the Ravens defense did this past year, all those stats for the Ravens defense are the same for Zachary Orr, who came from the same defense. Not necessarily some of the passing game stuff, which Wilson had a little bit more of an impact on than maybe Orr did, but still, the Ravens were unbelievable, and Orr and Wilson and all those guys clearly had their fingerprints in that in some capacity. He's known for the development of Patrick Queen, who really came along slowly as a rookie in his first couple seasons. And once, you know, Zach Orr got there, you know, he's playing the best football of his career right now. Roquan Smith was playing at an all pro level this year. Now that's kind of just Roquan, but again, credit, if you have an all pro linebacker on the staff that you oversee, that's still a positive on the old resume. He's an intense and fiery individual. I posted a couple of tweets uh, on Twitter, uh, retweeted a couple of things. Go watch them. He is fired up, jacked up. If you want intensity and energy, there is no candidate uh, on the Packers list that has the intensity and energy that Zach Orr has. He is, he's got it. Just trust me on that. He will bring that intensity every single day. And like I said, there's just far less information, quotes, anything like that, and just experience for Zachary Orr. And that's obviously going to be one of the negatives we get to in just a moment. These were the quotes from Jim Harbaugh, uh, obviously head coach in, uh, or sorry, sorry, John Harbaugh, head coach in Baltimore. Quote, he's always got that fire. Uh, You could always count on Zach. If you asked him his opinion, he's telling it to you. You appreciate that because he's got conviction. I see confidence all the time. And now I see even growing competence. He really has learned the game. He's a, he was a very smart player who's taken the time to study and learn the game. And he's become a good teacher. He breaks things down well and presents it to the guys very well. He's doing a really good job. Now, the, the the pros and, and, and cons here, again, are, are obvious, but at the same token, like I said, there's just, it's a compact amount of information that we have on Zachary Orr at this point. The pros, he's, he's coming from this Baltimore vaunted defense. He's going to bring an extreme energy and intensity to the team. Player development from the linebacker side of things has been great under his watch. And I would be shocked, 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 shocked if he does not bring a different, aggressive, intense approach to this defense. The downside, he's the least experienced candidate of an already you know, very inexperienced group of candidates. It's clear Matt is looking at some potential up-and-coming coaches, and Zach Orr is definitely that. But of a group of inexperienced candidates, Orr is the most inexperienced of all of them. It feels like to me that the next step for Orr would be, let's say Mike McDonald gets a head coaching job in Seattle. Zach Orr is the defensive coordinator for a team like that, where Mike McDonald is still the one that's putting together the playbook and calling the plays and doing those sorts of things. And Zach Orr can have a little bit more time to learn and then maybe move on to be a defensive coordinator with play calling duties. It just, it feels like there's a little bit more growth to go. Doesn't necessarily mean that he can't be a good defensive coordinator. It just, he's still very raw at everything. And you, for a team that, again, that's, even though they're willing to take on maybe some inexperienced candidates, this just feels maybe a little bit too inexperienced for where Green Bay is at right now. I'm not saying it couldn't work. Heck, you know, look at what some of these younger head coaches uh, even are doing, not to mention defensive coordinators and really coming up with these really fun schemes. Maybe that's Zach Orr and maybe just the intensity and energy that he brings would do it in and of itself. But I do feel like there's still a little bit more inexperience there that would give me just a little bit more hesitation with Orr. He doesn't have the breadth of schemes that he worked under, certainly like, uh, you know, Christian Parker or Denard Wilson have, and he's only been a linebackers coach. 
Like that's it. Outside linebackers, inside linebackers, not a passing game coordinator, not a secondary coach. It's just like he's been mostly focused on one specific thing over a very short period of time. So to go from that and just working for a few years with outside linebackers and inside linebackers, and then to go to head defensive coordinator in a position where you have full autonomy and command, where Matt's going to run the offense, Rich is going to run the special teams, and this is somebody who's going to run the defense like full bore. Like I said, it just feels a little early for me for Zach Orr. I I would love the energy and intensity that he would bring to the table. No two ways about it. I, I would be really intrigued to see what he would bring. I just feel like there's a few more well-established candidates that are out there at this point that would maybe make a little bit more sense, but we'll see. He would definitely be somebody that would raise my eyebrows, not just in a bad way and like, uh, all right, I'm really intrigued to see how this would go. But there are some really strong candidates out there. And I feel like Green Bay will probably go a different way, but he's a legitimate candidate. He does not have, as far as I've seen, he does not have any interviews with any other defensive coordinator openings at this point. That brings us down to five remaining confirmed candidates. There are probably other candidates that have interviewed that we just haven't heard about yet, or maybe haven't interviewed yet. But as of right now, as I'm recording this, five known candidates that are still left. Remember, Bobby Babich, now Bill's defensive coordinator. That leaves Aiden Dirt or Aiden Dirty, Denard Wilson, Zachary Orr, Christian Parker, and Brandon Staley. That's it. My updated list with Babich now gone is I still have Christian Parker a hair ahead of Denard Wilson at this point. Christian Parker is my 1A. Denard Wilson is my 1B. I would then probably go, I would probably go uh, somewhere of a mix between uh, Dirty or Orr and then probably Staley after that. But it, it's really Wilson and Parker for me. And then the rest of the group is just behind it. And I would love either of those hires. I think they'd both be great. It's interesting because as I went and as I like just barely started, I'm like, I'm not sure Denard Wilson is going to be the coach that, um, you know, I, I really would you know potentially want as defensive coordinator. And man, the more I dug in, the more I watched him, the more I heard him speak, the more I heard like all of it it became very clear. And if he was the guy, like, or if you want to make the argument that you like Wilson more than Parker, that's totally fine. I'm not going to argue with you. Like they're very, very close in my opinion. But to me right now for the five confirmed remaining candidates that are there, it's Wilson and Parker. And then the rest of the group is sort of uh, definitely a tear down for me at this point, but, or, and Wilson, both very intriguing candidates and both candidates. I love that Matt LaFleur interviewed. And as I've said for a week now, I can say who I like, you can say who you like, we, it's just so hard to tell unless we're in there in the interview process and hearing what these guys have to say. So if they hire a Staley or a Dirty or whatever, I think there's a lot of upside to a lot of these guys, Zach Orr, et cetera. You just hope you get the best version of them and that Matt LaFleur is right and that he hired the right guy. But top two on my list, Parker and uh, Denard Wilson. That is going to do it for me today. I appreciate you guys as always. You guys are the absolute best checking these out every single day, 365 days a year. Shout out to our Hall of Fame and All-Pro members, Most State of Minnesotan, PJ Wynn, John Wild, Chebra Dad, Brandon Paletta, Jennifer Wright, Boom Handle, Donna Lee, Lori Lord, Baby QB, and David McCluskey. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all those amazing things. Daily draft coming up later today with Ross Uglum. His player preview today, a player I know a lot of you like, Blake Corum, running back, Michigan. You're not going to want to miss that one. That will be out at noon central time on Wednesday. I will be right back here tomorrow with an all new episode. Pack a day live back Wednesday night. Lauren, Lauren Helmbrecht uh, from WFRV Sports in Green Bay, as well as Jacob Westendorf uh, covers the team in a million different ways, but Packer Report is certainly one of those. Those are going to be my two guests. You're not going to want to miss that one. Just amazing stuff going on at Packaday. I'll say it one more time. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out Packaday Podcast YouTube memberships. I'll see you tomorrow. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.